Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my topic is going to be slightly different from the rest of the presentations you've had today. Uh, but it's an overarching one. IT is an integral part of any manufacturing company. And uh, unlike Taranjeet, I do happen to be a chemical engineer. I have a bachelor's and master's in chemical engineering. So I consider more uh, myself as a chemical engineer than an IT person. And in fact, to get the best uh, results uh, from your IT investment, you need to have an in-depth understanding of the process. And that's what Plantis tries to do. So uh, I'm not going into too much detail on any particular topic. I'll just have a high level coverage of some of the key technologies uh, that are in the marketplace and that some of the companies at least are starting to employ. So the title of my presentation is Next Step in IT, Thriving in Big Data, Open Source, SAS, Cloud slash Mobile First, and Self-Service World. Let me start a timer so that I can keep track of the time. Okay, first thing I want to talk about is BI, business intelligence. That has become a buzzword in the last few years. And just as a quick um, question, which business subjects are BI related? So have increasing the use of information or analytics, targeting customers and markets more effectively, managing change initiatives, expanding current customer initiatives, expanding into new markets and geographies. And this is based on a well-known study by Gartner. The Gartner BI landscape actually is fairly comprehensive. You start with, uh, you start with something on the lower left-hand corner, with standard reports and online queries, and go all the way up to ad hoc queries, dashboards, KPIs. And final, the yellow band is um, requires more computational skills, and this is predictive modeling, data mining, simulation, risk analysis, and things like that. So the, the gamut of BI is fairly encompassing. So next thing I want to say is the BI is evolving. It has evolved significantly in the last five years or so. In 1998, we were where we were Microsoft and other companies called technical BI, in which the user gave his requirements and the IT person implemented it. From then on, we moved to self-service BI, where an analyst could do it. And finally, we are at a stage now where it is called end user BI, where everyone can make their own dashboards. And I'll, I'll illustrate very quickly what this is. So in fact, if you go to Plantis.net, there's a demo on this, or it will be ready by this weekend. I'll, I just have to put links to that. So I hope you can see, I know the font is small, but you can see most of it. So this is a dashboard that's typically used, fairly detailed. On the left side is all the sales overview and things like that. And on the right side is, uh, in this case, sales by state. You click on a state, and it gives more details, OK? It looks nice. Um, in the bottom, you can choose the time scale. So it is nice, but nothing fancy. What is fancy is at the lower left-hand corner, you see Edit in Designer. And once you click on that, you go to the next screen. And the, what that enables you to do is for, for any user is to modify the dashboard as per his requirement. So all you need to do is start with the dashboard. You click on Edit on Designer. You pull all these tools from the left-hand column, what kind of uh, BI display you want to see, and just drag and drop. Pick the fields you want to plot. Uh, pick the table or chart you want to plot, and you are done. So, And many companies already deploy tools like that. One of the key ones is Microsoft's Power BI, but there are tons of other companies. Um, doing advanced BI tools. For end user, it becomes very, very easy. He doesn't have to put a 
project to you know go to the IT and create a dashboard he can just create on his own on the fly and this makes the analysis much easier okay so that was my few slides on BI next is big data now big data is here I'll talk about the largest data warehouse in tetrabytes okay so here's the trend this is the size of the largest warehouse, data warehouse in terabytes. As you can see, till 2005, it was fairly steady. And then exponentially, the data storage capacity started to increase. Right? So we are at a stage where the data is so much that it becomes very, very difficult to um, generate meaningful results and useful results, predictive risk analysis, those kinds of analysis becomes very difficult unless you employ big data technologies. Okay, now big data seems like something new, but actually we have been here before. We have been here before as early as 1980. And I'll illustrate an example. In 1980, in, in the 80s what happened is the retail industry, it moved from a bi-monthly audit to point of sale, where the products could be scanned uh, at the time of purchase and the data started getting generated. That situation wasn't there before the 80s. In the 80s, you started getting a lot of data. And then let's see what happened. Data volumes jumped. It necessitated the next, the next generation of platforms and analytic tools started to came about, come about. And these are some of the analytic tools that are commonplace now, such as demand-based forecasting, such as supply chain optimization, trade promotion effectiveness, market-based analysis, category management and merchandising, price optimization and merchandise markdown, customer loyalty programs that starting from Amazon to everyone else uses now it is commonplace, right? So this is what the power of big data is. Now for the process industry, uh, we need to look at specific applications that requires process understanding. It's not, it's not that you can dump a whole bunch of data into a computer and you start getting meaningful results. So it needs process knowledge. It needs sort of knowledge of IT as well as the process in order to develop useful applications like were done in the 80s with the example I just illustrated in the previous slide. Okay, now big data need not be difficult. In fact, it can be very easy. I'll just illustrate a simple example. Okay, so here's the question. Find the total Wikipedia page views in December 2011. How hard is it to do that? Okay, turns out very, very easy two lines of code. You can run in Google right now. Okay. Select sum of views from a table which is called Wikimedia page views and you append the year and the month. That's it. Two lines of SQL query or you can say simple query and in 2.9 seconds it processes 105 gigabits of data and comes up with this answer more than 14 billion. Wikipedia page views in December 2011. Now, how do you implement this? This is called BigQuery, at least Google's term is BigQuery for this. How do you implement this in the scenarios in the oil and gas industry or coal gasification industry or the power plants? It is very simple. Simply put the data in a table, have it in a proper structured manner, and use a simple query to get the results. Right. Just as a simple query, you see the two-line query here. You can use a very simple query to get the results. If you do it in the cloud, you don't need to buy a server. You don't need to buy anything. You can go to a free Google Cloud Platform trial and get it done for free. Of course, it lasts only for a couple of months. So big data applications, where are they going to come from? So they are going to be entirely new use cases entirely new applications. 
similar to two slides earlier, the point of sale example that I showed you in the 1980s. It's entirely new analysis, new use cases, deep analysis, prediction and optimization. And I'll give one example, which uh, might be uh, familiar to most of the people in the audience. Alarm management, DCS and SCADA systems, on DCS and SCADA systems. So what you do is, in any manufacturing company I have seen, there are number of alarms generated every second. So over, over a year, there are gigabits of data, tons of data. Lot of these alarms are redundant. So what happens in equipment trips, and instead of getting one alarm, you get 50 alarms. All of them are telling you the same thing. And what it's doing is it's uh, overloading the operator, making the process less safe. So the challenge here is how do you analyze years of data and find out which alarms are redundant and can be removed, okay? So, um, so what the big data application can do, C is the critical event here, and A is sort of the precursor or one of the redundant alarms. So the big data application can look at years of data and identify and demonstrate in a graphical manner which alarms are redundant. And then you need to use a little bit of your process understanding and eliminate the alarms. So very simple, invest, very, very simple application and a direct safety benefit for plant operation. I'll uh, move to the next topic, which is open source software. So there's an annual survey done for open source software. The 10th anniversary was last year. And here are the findings. So there were 1,300 participants. And big companies, the finding was 78% of the big companies, they use open source software. In fact, 66% of the companies, they look at open source software before they look at proprietary software as a rule, okay? And the landscape has been changing, and, and most people would say the low cost is the main reason why people go for open source software, but that's not true. It was true in 2011. Till 2011, that was true. Since then, no. The main reasons for open source software are actually this. Interoperability, you avoid the vendor lock-in, innovation, and efficiency. So, in fact, open source is the modern arch architecture. It is the foundation of nearly all latest applications, cloud computing, databases, big data, and everything. They're all open source. Okay? The new generation of companies and business models is emerging. In fact, most of the revenue is going to be derived not from software license purchases, but in software as a service, custom development, services and support. There are few challenges, such as security management, but it's a challenge more of the way the companies are managing their IT, not a disadvantage of the, big, of the open source software itself. In fact, open source is the engine for innovation. It enables faster and more agile development. I'll take one instance of the open source application, which may come as a surprise to most of the people to many people maybe, ERP. ERP is going open source. Odoo is one of the companies that has this open source ERP application. Two million users, 5,400 developers, even big companies like Toyota or Hyundai are using. ERP Next is another. I'm just taking some key um, examples. It's used by 1,000 companies. Now there are two models in the open source ERP. One is completely free, such as ERP Next, and second is a fully functional community edition that's free and you pay premium for extra features. I'll change the track once again. I'll talk about cloud computing. Cloud computing benefits, no capex, minimal IT administration, low cost, you pay for what you use, in fact, Amazon has cut the prices 45 times in the last five years. That, that tells you how far the costs have come down. And the storage cost these days is less than a rupee per gigabyte per month, as low as that. You reduce your testing and deployment time by 75%. It's extremely simple to manage. In fact, an 
out of the box open source ERP can be installed with default features in minutes. You can scale up easily. All you just have to do is move a slide on, the, on your screen. Now, in terms of security concerns, here's a quote from the CTO of NASA. He's saying cloud is more secure than their own data centers. So NASA, a lot of big companies, they do in the cloud. Cloud is actually the future. I'll give you an example. Novartis, it used 87,000 compute cores, which means 87,000 computers to solve, to conduct 39 years worth of computational chemistry in nine hours. Now, this is something which no company can afford to do on its own unless it's in the cloud. So, in fact, next generation of applications are just not going to be possible without the cloud platform. So that, I, I just very quickly breezed through uh, four or five, six sort of new technologies. I just did not want to go into detail, give a very, very high level overview. And here's a, something to think about. What is holding us back from leveraging these new technologies? Because it is not the cost. Costs have come down significantly. I have thought about this uh, quite a bit. And my personal opinion is the thing that's holding us back is the fact that the people who have got the IT knowledge do not have the process knowledge. And the people who have got the process knowledge are not really in depth familiar with the latest technologies and how to employ them, how to deploy them in the company. So these two uh, sort of uh, skills need to, be, need to be merged together. And our company does exactly that. If you have any comments, questions, or you want to see a demo, some of these demos will be available by this weekend at the latest at plantis.net, our website. So you can talk to me at the conference. I'm available today and tomorrow. You can call at this number, or you can email at contact at plantis.net. Thank you very much.